Welcome to section 8.7 day 2, factoring special products. Today's objective is to factor perfect square trinomials and the difference of squares. Here it says, think about an answer. How do we recognize the difference of two perfect squares? And what you should hopefully remember from yesterday is that we'll have a perfect square minus a perfect square. It'll be a binomial, only two terms. The first one will be a perfect square and the last one will be a perfect square. And how do we recognize a perfect square trinomial? Well, first of all, we have three terms, and our first and last terms are perfect squares. Uh, then you can also double check to see if the square roots of the n, the two n terms, if you multiply them together and double them, do they match the middle? The biggest thing to recognize first is though, three terms, first and last term are perfect squares when it's in standard form. And how can you tell that this is not a perfect square, that x squared minus 19x plus 90 is not a perfect square trinomial? Well, the last term, 90, is not a perfect square. So here it says factor each expression. We have 16x squared minus 9. We do have a perfect square minus a perfect square. We use our rule from the other day, our shortcut. We take 16x squared, the square root of that is 4x. We take the square root of 9, which is 3. And we have two different factors. One's positive, one's minus. So 4x plus 3 and 4x minus 3. Those are our two factors. Here we have 36x squared minus 49. We should always look for GCF first. This one does not have a GCF, just like the one above. We have a perfect square in 36x squared, and we have 49, which is a perfect square. The square root of 36x squared is 6x. The square root of 49 is 7. And we will have two factors, one with a plus and one with a minus. Next one, we have 9g squared minus 24g plus 16. We verify there is not a GCF in it first, and there is not. Then we look, we have a 9g squared and a 16 for our first and last terms. They are both perfect squares. So the square root of 9g squared is 3g. The square root of 16 is 4. Uh, we match the sign of the middle. This is a binomial squared. And to verify that the whole thing was a perfect square trinomial, now I'll multiply the 3g minus the 4. Multiply them together, you get 3g times negative 4 is negative 12g. And if it's doubled, it should match the middle. And negative 12g doubled is, in fact, negative 24g. Last one, again, look for that GCF if there's one. There isn't. We have a perfect square for 81y squared. We have a perfect square in one. We take the square root of the first. We take the square root of the last. We match the sign of the middle, and it's a binomial squared. To verify this is, in fact, a perfect square trinomial, again, multiply the first and last term together and double it. 9y times 1 is 9y. 9y doubled is, in fact, 18y. These are the factored forms. Here it says, find the side length of the square with the given area. We have 81r squared minus 72r plus 16. And to find the area of a square, both the side lengths are the same, so it's going to be some, something squared. So we just want to factor this. Again, we look at the first and last terms, and this one, our first and last terms are both perfect squares. The square root of 81r squared is 9r. The square root of 16 is 4. The sign of our middle term is negative, so we have a minus sign. This is all squared, so our side lengths are 9r minus 4 times 9r minus 4. These are my two lengths. If you wanted to verify, again, it's a perfect square trinomial. Take 9r times negative 4, you get negative 36r. You double it, you get negative 72r. If it wasn't a perfect square trinomial, we would go and have to factor using AC split. Here it says to factor completely, we have 27w squared minus 12. We have 12n squared minus 36n plus 27. So we need to look for GCFs. Uh, we have 27w squared minus 12. 27 and 12 are both divisible by 3. So we first pull out a 3. We're left with 9w squared minus 4. 
we are left now with a difference of squares. 9w squared is a perfect square. Negative 4 is a perfect square. So we are going to use our rule. Take the square root of the first. Take the square root of the second. We have two different factors. One with plus, one with minus. So our factored form is 3. 3w plus 2 in parentheses and 3w minus 2 in parentheses. Next one, we have 12n squared minus 36n plus 27. Again, we're looking for a GCF, and this one has a GCF of 3. So we're left with 4n squared minus uh, 12n plus 9. Again, our first term is a perfect square, 4n squared, and our last term is a perfect square. We have a perfect square trinomial in this case. Square root of the first term is 2n. The square root of 9 is 3. We use the sine of the middle. And this is a binomial squared. To make sure it works, that it is indeed a perfect square trinomial we just factored. Multiply 2n minus 3. You get negative 6n. You double it, and you get negative 12n. This is my factored form. 3 times a binomial 2n minus 3 squared. Here we have a rectangular prism has a volume of 3x cubed plus 24x squared plus 48x. What expressions can represent the dimensions of the prism? So we're looking for volumes. We have length times width times height. Length, width, and height. First thing we have is 3x cubed plus 24x squared plus 48x. We need to look for a GCF. And all the terms can be divisible by 3 and they all have an x in them. So if we take and divide this out by 3x everywhere, we can then have something we can factor further. 3x cubed divided by 3x is x squared. 24x squared over 3x is 8x. And then 48x over 3x is 16. So we have 3x, then we have x squared plus 8x plus 16. We look at what's in our parentheses. We have a perfect square for the first term, a perfect square for the last term. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 16 is 4. This is a perfect square trinomial. If you want to verify, multiply 4 times x, you get 4x, double it, and it is 8x. So this is my factored form, 3x and then x plus 4 squared. But it's asking what our dimensions are, so we need to assign these to our length, width, and height. So length is 3x, let's say. Width is x plus 4. And height is x plus 4. We can rearrange this any way we want. We could say the, the length is x plus 4 and the height is 3x. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you assign each of your dimensions one of the factors. All right, so we've done a lot of stuff through sections 8.5, 6, and 7. Have some terms. Uh, so it says complete each sentence with a word from the list below. We have binomial factors, common factors, factor, and group. So the first one, blank out the greatest common factor. It sort of sounds redundant, but it is factor out the greatest common factor. That's the first thing you should do on any of our factoring problems. See if there's a GCF. If a polynomial has two or three terms, look for the difference of two squares, or a perfect square trinomial, or a pair of binomial factors. That was a little different to think about, but when we factored all these things, we've almost always ended up with a binomial. It's just a question of the process we went through to get them. If the polynomial has four or more terms, we group terms. We've been doing that since section five. So we group terms to find common binomial factors. We group them and we do the GCF out of each group. And then last, as a final check, always look at your factors and make sure there are no common factors other than one. So if you forget to pull out a GCF at the beginning, quite often, if you look again at your factors, you should be able to find out there's another 
on GCF, you missed at the beginning. You can factor out at the end if you have to. It's always best to do it at the beginning, but always double check your factors at the end to see if there is a common factor still left in one of your binomials. All right, that is all for section 8.7 day two. Um, that is all for factoring. That was our last section of the chapter. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.